Dr. Uda Ulfkat is a renowned journalist and academic, but his views on Islam have caused an outcry, has been investigated by the German government and has received multiple death threats. Now, Dr. Ulfkot, what are your issues with Islam? Whenever you see a tribe in the Amazonas in Brasilia that is untouched by a different culture, everybody is going to stand up and to say, you have to protect this tribe that is not affected by Western or Eastern or Muslim or whatever culture. You have to protect those people yeah? in the Amazonas in Brasilia. So uh, I, what I believe is that there is a place for Muslims in this world and for their culture. They have a place to live in. And there is a place for European and Western culture to live in. What I don't believe is they will live peacefully together. We have a clash not only of civilizations and of religions, we have a clash, clash of ideologies. Like we had a clash between communism and capitalism. Now we have a clash because Islam is also an ideology. I believe that Islam is not going to win this battle. It is a battle. I believe, uh, I'm not afraid that Muslim will be, uh, Mus the Muslims will overrun Europe now. I don't believe that because uh, uh, I believe that what we have done in the past several times, uh, the people will stand up and say, we are fed up. We don't want that anymore and try to push them back, and that will be violent. I belong to Europe and to the European culture, and the Muslims belong to the places where they came from. Because whenever I asked the majority of the Turks I speak to, and I ask them, are you German or are you Turkish, even if they are second or third generation, they will say, I'm Turkish. The Palestinians, wherever they live, if they live in Saudi Arabia as workers, they say, I'm a Palestinian and my home is Palestine. I don't blame them for that, I just say, okay. So if they say they have their roots there, they are happy there, all the best, take your suitcases and go back to where you are happy, I will be happy, you will be happy. Now, is there anything inherent in Islam that makes it different to other religions and makes it particularly difficult for Muslims to integrate? Some parts of the Quran uh, ask Muslims not to integrate. D to give you a clear view, an example, it is Surah 3, verse 110. This says, as a believer, as a Muslim, you should not learn from an unbeliever. Yeah? You're not allowed. You are the ones who rule and to decide what is good and what is bad, because you are Muslims. And it is not the unbelievers to whom you should listen. You should obey to Islam and to the Muslims. You should not learn in unbelievers' schools. So we, are going, we, ha we have 30% of Muslims, of Turkish Muslims in Germany leaving schools without learning anything. They, they don't have a diploma or anything because their religion in Surah 3, verse 110, tells them you don't have to obey to what the unbelievers tell you because you are a natural born Muslim. You are, you are more worse than an unbeliever. Why do you listen to what they tell you? Forget that. So this, this is going to cause conflicts. This is going to cause big problems. You could never, never publicly, uh, and especially not in the mass media, you could never talk about incest in the Islamic culture, that um, people who are relatives, cousins, if they marry, and that is uh, common in Pakistan, common in Turkey, common in Morocco, if they marry and if they do the incest, that it will not be good because they have schizophrenia, uh, they have uh, diseases. We have to talk about that. Our emperor families used to practice incest and in some valleys of the Alp, Alps you had incest. But now it, um, you're not allowed to marry your first great cousin in Germany because we don't want to have schizophrenia and all those diseases. So why do we, why do we want to talk publicly to uh, our Muslim population and tell them we, we don't like to marry your first great cousin because of the, the diseases, not because we don't like you, we don't want to have that diseases. Now, but some people say that the problem isn't so much ideological as it is economic. We have thrown that much money behind them 
that if we would have that money back, we wouldn't have any financial problems in Europe. So uh, we always say, oh, this, all those problems have to do with the social background of these groups, these Muslim groups that do not behave as we want them to behave. It has nothing to do with the social background. It is the ideology and uh, the economical problems. What we have right now is also because they have taken a hell of a lot of money from us. To give you an example, the, uh, the migrants in Germany have so far, up to the year 2007, they have taken more than one billion, I mean the English billion, not the American, they have taken more than one billion euros more out of our social welfare system than what they have paid into our system. One billion euros. To, to give you an idea what that means, we have debts. The German government has debts. The total amount of the German government's debts is 1.7 billion euros. What part has the media played in this? The mainstream media has played a very, very uh, big part in that because whenever you have criticized the situation, they did not print it. It was against political correctness, as uh, a majority of the journalists in Europe, not only in Germany, the majority of the journalists are out of the uh, 86th generation. That means a left-wing generation who clearly wanted to have this migration movement and who clearly wanted to have a new human being mixed from different cultures of the world. It was not bad what they wanted, the idea of having a new human being that will have peacefully in the future together. That was not a bad idea, but just in reality it does not function. Have you personally suffered for your beliefs? Two times I had to leave my home uh, because uh, I have death threats. I had death threats. I still have them. And uh, we live in anonymity. We had police protection for a long, long time. But my family and me, we decided we don't want to have that anymore. There is many people in Europe who are threatened uh, uh, to be killed by Muslims. It is not only me. My hand is absolutely quiet if I would die this moment because I have the feeling with my belief, with whatever I do, this is the right way for me. Are you a Christian? I was born in, in a Christian family and within when I was 21, 22 years, I have thrown away Christianity. I have, have denied my roots, the roots of my Christian family. I, uh, I have decided to be an atheist. I was traveling through the Muslim world for the Frankfurter Allgemeine newspaper and I converted to Islam in Herat in Afghanistan. When I speak about Islam, I speak from my own knowledge. I have, to, I have lived for a long time, for many, many years, together with Muslims. Um, but now I'm an ex-Muslim. I'm a reborn Christian. But now I'm a Christian from, from the bottom of my heart, not because, my, it was, no, I, not because I was raised in a Christian family. I came back to my roots and much stronger than before, but I don't speak to you or to people to praise Christianity. So what future do you predict for this continent? The financial and economical crisis, it looks like it will come back. And whenever you had in history, whenever you had economical, hard economical problems, ethnical unrest, and the people, large groups not respect the state laws and um, the power of the state. When this respect is gone, um, you, you had war or civil war.